hello everyone welcome to my youtube channel thank you to, to those who have subscribed if you don't if you are not subscribe please do so so today we are going to start our first topic we are going to talk about tuberculosis that is tb and we say it is a disease that is preventable treatable and curable so the outline of this presentation will be on introduction under this introduction, I am going to give the background information about TB. Then we'll go to the basic information on TB, a bit of the natural history of TB, and then we'll define certain terms that are commonly used in TB. Just some of them, not all terms. So welcome everyone. So TB is a disease that is caused by a germ called Mycobacterium tuberculosis and it is a highly infectious disease that is uh, airborne, that is it is spread from one person to the other through the air. Majority of the TB disease affect the lungs but it can also affect other parts of the body apart from the hair, the teeth and the nails and when we talk about the teeth we mean the enamel, the white enamel. This is because these parts are they don't have their uh, blood supply. So in 1993, WHO, that is the World Health Organization, declared TB as a global health emergency. This was based on data uh, involving the high number of people that are infected with TB and also death that uh, arose from the TB disease. So it was declared a global health emergency. So since then, there have been over 60 million deaths resulting from this disease. And uh, this one has been so, despite uh, the efforts that have been put by various countries to ensure that uh, access to TB treatment and even diagnosis is free or affordable to everyone who need these services. So this is quite a big number of people dying from a disease that we say is preventable, treatable and curable. In the global annual report for TB, it is reported that TB remains the leading cause of ill health or cause of sickness from a single infectious disease worldwide so in 2021 uh, who estimated that 10.6 million people became sick with tb worldwide and majority of these people are men that is 6 million and 3.4 million were women while 1.2 million were children so men meaning men are more affected with tb than women. This uh, is because we know how men, the social behavior of men, they like being in joints, in the workplaces, hustling, looking for money, even they spend a lot of their time outside, away from home, mingling with others. And this is where they get exposed to this infection, as opposed to women. Majority of women, after work maybe, they just stay at home. But for a man, sometimes after work, they want to go to a joint, take one or two. Over the weekend, they are in the video caves watching football or something like that. So they get exposed there. So majority of, of those who are infected with TB are men. So drug resistant TB has also become a threat to global health security. There are emerging cases of drug resistant TB. And by drug resistant TB we mean being resistant or the disease is not responding to the first line drugs that are supposed to treat TB. We'll see all this in our 
other presentations that will follow. So the emerging case of drug resistant has also become a global health security concern. According to WHO 2022, the treatment target for TB for all ages was 40 million. This data looked at re re reports from 2018 to 2021. So out of this target of 40 million, 26.3 million were treated. That is 66%, meaning 34% uh, of those who had TB were missed. They were not diagnosed and put on treatment for TB. And for children, 3.5 million were targeted. However, only 1.9 million were diagnosed with TB. This is accounting for 54%, meaning 46% of children with TB were missed within this period. That is between 2018 and 2021. And for drug-resistant TB, the target was for 1.5 million, but only 649,000 patients with DRTB accessed treatment. That is 43%, meaning 57% were missed. And for DRTB case finding among children, the target was 115,000, but only 17,700 were diagnosed with drug-resistant TB, accounting for 15%. So what does this slide mean? It means that there are still missing cases within our communities who are not being diagnosed with TB or who are not accessing treatment, TB treatment. So these are people who are still spreading this infection in the population. So we should be thinking of ways of accessing these people to avoid this cycle of infection and reinfection of TB. At the same time, WHO targeted 30 million eligible population to have been put on TB preventive treatment between 2018 and 2021. But this did not happen. Only 12.5 million people who are eligible for TB preventive therapy were put on the same. That is accounting for 42%, meaning 58% did not get the TB preventive treatment, yet they were considered to be eligible. This is a population that is at high risk of developing a TB disease, meaning they, be, they could be having the infection, the, their bodies could be have burying this TB infection, but they have not started developing signs and symptoms of TB. So the aim of this TB preventive therapy or treatment is to prevent them from progressing to a TB disease. So the target for household contacts to bacteriologically confirmed TB cases targeted with TPT was 4 million for children under 15 years and 20 million for, uh, for adults. So in TB, in TB management, we consider children to be those below 15 years and adults, those who are above 15 years. However, only 1.6 million of children who are reached with TB preventive therapy, that is accounting for 3%. Uh, uh, for, sorry, for uh, accounting 40%, while only 3% of adults who are reached with TB preventive therapy, meaning majority of these people missed the opportunity from, from being uh, prevented from developing the TB disease. So this is one of the strategies in reducing the infection, this TB infection from spreading. If you can cut off the chain of the progression from a TB infection to a TB disease through TPT will be reducing even the number of TB cases that we see in our communities. So during this time between 2018 and 2021, the only target that was met and surpassed was uh, 
a TB preventive treatment among people living with HIV. During this time, the target was uh, 6 million, but <clears throat> we managed to get 10.3 million of people living with HIV, uh, HIV being put on TB preventive therapy. We know the risk of uh, uh, associated with the HIV co-infection. So it uh, lowers immunity. So once you have HIV, you, uh, you have higher risk of getting TB than somebody who is not HIV positive, the HIV negative. We say data says that it is around 20, 20 times. Those who are HIV positive are 20 times more at risk of developing TB than those who are HIV. Only one in three uh, people with drug resistant TB can access treatment. This is because many remain undiagnosed and therefore are not treated. This point implies that our DRTB surveillance has, is also suboptimal. We know that uh, we are supposed to anybody to do a DRTB surveillance among uh, among new patients. We are supposed to uh, do a gene expert. The benefit of gene expert is that it can also give us a drug resistant pattern, especially with rifampicin. And any previously treated patient, any patient that has been exposed to TB drugs, is also supposed to undergo a drug resistant TB surveillance by taking a sputum sample for a culture DST. Those who turn positive at month two of treatment. They are also supposed to, to have their samples taken for culture DST. Same to those who turn positive uh, at month 5 and month 6. So most of the patients are not subjected to this test and therefore they are not diagnosed with drug resistant TB. In low and middle income countries like ours, healthcare financing is heavily reliant on out of pocket payments. Meaning for people to access healthcare, they incur costs that they pay through from their pockets. However, the TB treatment has been free of charge, right from diagnosis right from consultation, diagnosis, and treatment. People in resource-constrained settings are at higher risk of developing the disease because of the economic situation. We know such people stay in crowded places and even they are, where they stay are not well ventilated. So chances of them getting this TB infection is very, very high. And also accessing treatment once somebody is sick becomes a problem. Finding and treating TB cases among population in the middle and income countries is the biggest global challenge facing public health systems. Like I said, like I've said, if when accessing the healthcare services in terms of uh, finances or geographical access is a challenge. We find that uh, most people, they live in remote remote settings that uh, are not served with any healthcare. Uh, they don't have any healthcare system within their reach. So they have to travel for kilometers to access any nearby uh, health facility. So these are expenses that most of the populations within the LMICs don't have. Then we also have a, a challenge of uh, weak health systems in some of the, these countries, especially with regards to commodities, the healthcare commodities, and even the human resources for health. We find that in such settings, 
the number of healthcare workers, the ratio of healthcare worker to uh, the population is very low. So you find a facility is in, a, in an outpatient department, it's only one healthcare provider attending to all patients coming to seek for healthcare services in these facilities. So with that high workload, even the quality of healthcare services provided by these healthcare providers is very low. The quality is not guaranteed. So even this healthcare provider to even think of making a diagnosis for TB sometimes become a problem. So you find patients going back and going home and coming back with the same problem and end up not being diagnosed with TB. To basic information on TB, like I said in when I started, TB is a highly infectious disease that is caused by a germ called Mycobacterium TB. And it is estimated that 2 billion people globally, globally are infected with, with TB. And among this population, 5 to 15 percent will develop the disease during their lifetime. So you can be infected with the TB, but you can harbor this bacilli within your body. When your immune system is strong enough to contain this bacilli or this bacteria within your body, you can remain with the infection and not show any signs and symptoms of TB. That is why this point is saying, but out of this population, 5 to 15 percent may develop the disease in their lifetime, either within the first two years or even later, many years later. The germ is spread through the air, that is why it is called airborne disease. From one person who is infected to the one who is not infected with TB. When this person with TB coughs, sneezes, laughs, talks, or even when they are singing, they can spread this, they can produce this bacilli or this germ and then spread it in the air. So they remain, the bacilli or the germs remain suspended in air for, for some hours. So if you inhale it, if you are not infected, you can get the infection from there. TB usually affects the lung. That is majority of cases present with pulmonary TB, that is TB of the lungs. But other parts of the body can also be affected by TB. Point to note is that TB is strictly transmitted through the air and not through surface contacts or handshaking like we saw with, with COVID-19. People who are under medications, once you have been put on TB treatment, you stop being infectious after a few weeks of treatment, meaning you cannot infect other people within just a few weeks of being initiated on treatment. These drugs, the TB medication, they kill the TB bacilli or the TB germs very, very, very fast. So within a few weeks, you stop being infectious. Even if you cough, chances of infecting others is very, are very minimal because the antibiotics or the drugs that you've been put on have killed the the bacilli or the germs very fast. Currently, the drug susceptible TB, the DSTB treatment, takes at least 6 to 12 months. So, the one that takes 12 months are DSTB of the meninges, that is TB of the brain, TB of the bones, and TB of the joints. But the other drug susceptible t forms of TB takes six months. But this duration is being revised. Very soon we might end up treating TB for a lesser duration. Uh, findings have shown that uh, adherence to TB treatment is enhanced when the duration of treatments is shortened. For drug resistant TB, the treatment takes currently the treatment takes uh, between 18 months to 24 months. Apart from the uh, isoniazid resistant TB that takes uh, treatment for six months. So these are uh, being revised. So very soon we might end up treating TB for 
shorter duration than this. When that one is implemented, when the guidelines are now in place to start uh, to implement that, be sure to be informed through this channel. So like I've said in my first slide, TB is preventable, treatable and curable. Meaning there are measures to prevent TB. And once you have been put on treatment and successfully complete the duration of treatment, you will be declared treated. And those who are diagnosed through the sputum, you do the follow-up smears as required, as scheduled. You take your medication strictly the way you are being told. You will end up being cured of TB disease. So what is the natural history of TB? Once you are exposed to TB, let's say you are in a public uh, place or uh, you are using a pu uh, public uh, means of transport, you are in a bus, and there's somebody who has TB inside that bus. When this person coughs, these people, the other passengers are exposed to the TB. So out of those who are exposed, 70 to 90 percent of them will not get infected. But 10 to 30 percent of them will get infected with the disease. And out of the 30 to 30, out of the 10 to 30 percent who will be infected with TB, 90 percent of them will have what we call latent TB. That is a dormant TB. This is a TB that is within their body, but because of the strong immune immunity that they, they have, they'll be able to harbor this infection. So they will not show any signs and symptoms of TB. And with that, and for that, they will not be infectious. But on the other hand, 10% uh, will develop the TB disease. These are the people now uh, that will be showing signs and symptoms of, of TB. They will develop TB within two years of getting the infection, and some may get the, the disease many years later. Five, so 5% five will develop the disease within two years, and another 5% will develop the disease even many years later. This is where now sometimes you get a, a challenge with the mothers whose children are diagnosed with TB. You might find that a child, a, the healthcare provider diagnoses a TB in a child, in a two-year child. The parents don't have any signs or symptoms of TB. So we find that majority of them, they deny this. They tell the healthcare providers that, no, my child cannot have TB. Where would this child have gotten this TB? And yet, uh, as parents, we don't have those signs and, or symptoms of TB. So in our setup, especially as Africans, we have a tendency of uh, visiting a mother who is who has given birth. People go to greet children. So in the process of greeting these children, you never know, among these people who are coming to our houses to, vi to visit these mothers, some of them could be having TB. So we say TB is spread even when somebody talks. Okay. So you are there, the person with TB is there talking to this newborn child and this person is infected with TB, obviously they will infect even the, the child. So later when this, this child now develops the, the, the disease, the mothers will have forgotten that there was somebody or there were some people who came to visit us when this child was born. So you can develop the TB within two years after the infection or even many years later. So if those who have developed the TB disease are not treated, majority of them will die within five years. That is 50%. Then 
out of this 25% will naturally recover from the disease. We rem even remember during COVID-19, there are those who just recovered without being diagnosed with, with COVID-19. And also there's another percentage, that is 25%, that will remain sick. They don't seek treatment, but they, they remain sick with the disease. And if those who have the TB disease are treated, then they will be cured. So a few terms we need to define. First one is a presumptive TB. So a presumptive TB is one who presents with symptoms or signs suggestive of TB. Initially, they used to be called TB suspect, but because of human rights issues, this term was, was changed to TB presumptive. Then a TB case, this is a patient who has been diagnosed with TB. In the contact management register, you will find it being referred to as an index case. This is a person who has been diagnosed with, with TB. Then a bacteriologically confirmed TB case. This is a, a person whose sputum sample has been subjected to some biological, uh, has been subjected to some tests like gene expert or culture or smear microscopy, and the test has been reported as positive. Then a clinically diagnosed TB case is one that does not fulfill the criteria of a bacteriological confirmation. This is a patient that has been, maybe the test has been done, and for one reason or the other, it has turned to be negative. So other tests have been, other investigations have been done, and the diagnosis has been made. Or the healthcare provider attending to this uh, patient through the history that he or she has taken from this patient and the physical examination findings that he or she has done on this patient are pointing towards TB. And this healthcare provider has ruled out other causes of the signs and symptoms the patient is presenting with. Then this can be a clinical diagnosis of, of TB. And a clinically diagnosed case who is again now subjected to a pathological confirmation test either before the treatment is initiated or even in the course of treatment and the test turns positive then this case will be reclassified as bacteriologically confirmed and all these cases should be notified whether the treatment was started or not then another term is TB preventive therapy. I talked about it earlier, but it's a, a medication given to, an, to individuals considered to be at high risk of developing TB disease. We'll cover this topic, the TB preventive therapy, later in my presentations. It is a, also a topic, it, can, it is a topic on its own. So those who are considered to be at high risk are contacts of a bacteriologically confirmed TB case because they have been exposed to the, the infection. So they could be harboring the infection and yet they have not started showing signs and symptoms of, of TB disease. So you give them this medication to cut off the chain from being a TB infection to developing a, a TB disease. The other category are the healthcare providers. Healthcare providers are exposed due to their nature of work, they are exposed to the TB infection because of the patients they attend to. They are attending to so many patients, some of whom they don't know they, they could be having uh, the TB and yet diagnosis has not been made. So the healthcare providers are at risk, so they should be given a TB preventive therapy. Those who are in congregate settings like the prison, prisoners and prison staff because of that number because of that congestion there 
chances of them, if one has TB, chances of other, others getting infected are very high. So they should be given a TB preventive therapy. So we'll cover this TB preventive therapy topic later. We'll see all those risk groups and what should be done before somebody is started on and this TPT. And with that, we come to the end of our first lesson on TB. Remember to subscribe for those who have not subscribed. Also share, like, and give your comments. <laughs> Remember, it is through this comment that will enable me to improve on this channel. So I leave you with this say that every breath counts, so we need to stop TB now. All efforts should be made to ensure that those who have signs and symptoms of TB access our healthcare facilities for screening, investigation, and those who are diagnosed with TB are initiated on treatment immediately. So with that, that I say thank you, let's meet in our next video.